Hi, I'm Mark. I want to share with everyone out there an experience I went through recently in the fight for gay rights. In July, this video appeared on YouTube. Mark Pack said he was a victim of homophobia. He'd wanted to join the Gaza flotilla, but they wouldn't let gay people on board. Since it would not be in the overall interests of the flotilla. I was surprised and a bit insulted. Who are these people? But the video was a fake. Mark was an actor called Omer Gershon, and he'd never contacted the Gaza flotilla. Do you know who's behind this? Do you think there was anyone involved from the Israeli government? No. You no. No. I've no idea yet whether Omer Gershon was working for the Israeli government, but I do know that it's the sort of thing that unpopular institutions have started doing. They post fake blogs and videos purporting to be from supportive, regular people. The story of how I know this begins with a girl in Los Angeles called Natalie Sarkeesian and a man named Wendell Potter, who says he was partly responsible for her death. Nataline Sarkeesian um, was a 17-year-old girl who lived in Los Angeles and when she was um, uh, 15, I think maybe 14, she was diagnosed with leukemia. She eventually had a, a bone marrow transplant and, and her doctors um, said that that weakened her and she actually had to have a liver transplant. She and her family were covered under a, a, a plan offered by my company, a Cigna Healthcare Plan. Wendell was Cigna's Vice President of Corporate Communications. Nataline's family were just regular Cigna policyholders. But just normal. Yeah, exactly. We're policyholders that we pay on time. One day in December, Nataline's mother, Hilda, got a telephone call from the hospital. So when they called my house, I picked up the phone, they said, Hilda, we have the best news for you. We have, uh, we have a liver. Um, it's available. Um, don't rush. Just put on your best outfit and come in. And I questioned. I said, uh, who is it? I, how, how old? And I was, and usually you're not supposed to tell who it is, but they did. So, of course, I went online and I figured out who it was. And who was it? It was a young kid, 19-year-old, that a car accident. So that freaked me too. And I was like, I wore red. I got up and um, we rushed there. And the doctor uh, uh, took uh, the parents aside as soon as they got there and said, I'm sorry, um, even though there's a liver available for us to transplant, uh, we, don't have, we don't have clearance from Cigna. And Which those, is the health insurance company exactly, that you work for. That I work for. Well, my husband came down, he, he, just, he went like this, and I just started hitting my legs. I remember that. I just, I just couldn't. The medical director for the company 2,500 miles away in Pittsburgh, um, just based on his review of, of some medical records, said he didn't think that in her case it would be medically necessary. The doctors believed that Nataline's transplant had a 65% chance of success. They knew some healthcare executives get bonuses if they can find ways to decline claims. And maybe that's what was going on here. A hospital nurse told some bloggers... The bloggers called Wendell for a comment. Wendell says he had a poster on his office wall that read, Be Obscure Clearly. There's one blogger in particular who's, who lives in New York, who blogs under the name of NYC Eve, uh, who took this on as, uh, as a cause, and uh, uh, she actually made my life very miserable. She got a lot of of bloggers and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of other attention focused on this case to the point that it became a very big public relations problem for for Cigna. And I checked uh, on the Cigna website and I got all the names and phone numbers of the Cigna executives and uh, their emails and I said we've just got to start to uh, wear them out. So it sort of went viral. So it was just uh, we were it was quite huge. So what did you say? Well, you know, we said that, um, uh, first of all, we said we, we can't comment on a particular case for legal reasons, for privacy reasons. We, uh, we said that we couldn't even acknowledge that she was uh, a member of the Cigna Health Plan. So I get the initial uh, response was to just not give any information at all. It was quite an experience. I, I've never seen anything quite like it. 
uh, it was not even possible for me to even uh, uh, possibly read each email. I had to call uh, uh, security and, and uh, our technology people to figure out uh, what I was going to do because I couldn't, I couldn't even send an email out because of all that was coming in. And I realized then the power of the, of the internet and, the, and the, the influence that bloggers can have. To, if, they, if they decide to get involved in something, they can really change, change things. And did Signal and you think to yourselves, God, wouldn't it be nice if uh, we could be more like the bloggers because they seem more likeable than us? Oh, absolutely. The insurance industry knows that it's, it's held in low esteem. It was a strange time for Wendell. He was flying on the company jet to crisis meetings while pro-Nataline demos organised by the nurses and the bloggers began forming outside Cigna headquarters. I had been on the jet many times before. I never really paid attention to exactly what was going on, but uh, um, I was on the, on the, on the, on the flight with uh, the CEO going to Connecticut, I think it was, and we were, it was a fairly short flight, but it was over lunchtime, and so a flight attendant who was a, an employee of the company, just like I was, uh, brought us lunch and served us lunch on gold rim china and gave us uh, um, gold plated flatware to eat it with. The contrast uh, uh, hit me uh, because you can live a life and, and, and distance yourself from that reality. But you, you deal in the abstract all the time. When you're dealing with numbers, you don't really stop to think uh, that they're flesh and blood human beings. Wendell carried on doing his job that week, but they knew they'd lost the Nataline battle. When it became abundantly clear that, the, that this was not going to go away, uh, the company decided to go ahead and pay for the procedure. You've seen the video. Uh, this young lady was approaching me who's our attorney, and saying that Cigna reversed their decision. Okay, Cigna, can I announce yeah. it? Cigna just approved us. Yeah. Yeah. God, God is with me. God is with me. And the family was just joyous. Unfortunately, it, was, um, it doesn't have a happy ending. Uh, the, the transplant never took place because uh, so much time had passed that uh, she got sicker, Nataline did, and her, her, her other organs began to, to shut down and she died just a few hours after uh, Cigna agreed to cover the transplant. Yeah, I just didn't have it in me after Nataline died to, to stay with in the industry. I turned in my notice soon after that. These days, Wendell doesn't earn much money. Instead, he just feels compelled to travel around telling people about the nefarious things health insurance companies get up to in secret. He says it's like his way of making amends. <coughs> he came all the way to my flat, even though he'd been on a plane from America all night, and he had a terrible cold. They denied so many people that that guilt couldn't take it anymore. He could not take the guilt because uh, he had a daughter too. Because he does have a daughter who's 19 now, and I don't have mine. And um, I'm glad he did what he did, and I just hope everyone else does the same thing. But of course, with the, all these bonuses and how insurance companies work, and they teach their employees to deny care for profit, and those employees are just so bonded for these insurance companies. But you know what? I'm very proud of Wendell, and um, I'm very happy that he, what he did. One thing he wanted to tell me was how they learnt from the bloggers during the Nataline Sarkeesian disaster. They learnt to set up their own fake AstroTurf blogs. They're called AstroTurf because they're, they're fake grassroots organisations. Um, they, they, they look and can seem to behave uh, uh, like real grassroots organisations, but they're not. They, they don't really exist except uh, uh, on a website. Cigna wasn't the first. Back in 2006, when Walmart was getting terrible press about its anti-union, poor healthcare and low-wage policies, a couple of bloggers called Jim and Laura went on holiday to visit Walmarts across America. Even though it seemed a strange way to spend a vacation, nobody cottoned on for a while. The staff members Jim and Laura met always went the extra mile to place bags in customers' carts. Managers and staff were quick to sing each other's praises. It turned out that Jim and Laura were real people, but the whole trip 
right down to the gas, was paid for by Walmart's public relations firm, Edelman. Wendell says he'll show me some of the fake pro-Signa blogs he was involved in. Uh, let's see, where can we find it? Try the Wayback Machine and see if you can find it. Yeah, good idea. Not available, because they've even managed to get off the Wayback yeah. Machine. It's completely gone. Um, how have you done? There was no trace of Wendell's fake blogs anywhere. It was like they were never there, erased from history by the company that had commissioned them. So Wendell had to go from memory. He said many of the fake blogs purported to be from angry Americans convinced that if Obama's health care reforms went through, the government would create death panels. And this was in particular uh, for uh, would, would be death panels for senior citizens. Uh, and some bureaucrat would be uh, making a determination as to whether some senior citizen was worthy of treatment or not. Death panels, that death panels, panels to decide who would die. That's exactly right. That was. Uh, it sounds like the death panels actually already exist. They do exist, and, and and I point that out to groups that, and I did then that, yeah. the, the the legislation wouldn't create them in the government, uh, but they exist every day. And I tell them the story about Nadine Sarkeesian. The fake death panel blogs may have vanished, but their influence is everywhere to be seen. Infamous death panels who are supposed to have died before the passage of the Democrats' health care bill? Looks like they're alive and kicking. Are the so-called death panels revived? After furious hot debate months ago, the end-of-life planning that was in the health care bill was dropped. But could it be back? Well, without getting too much into the weeds and, and the how it would actually happen, can the Congress rescind this decision by Secretary uh, Sebelius to create these death panels? Uh, and it, uh, it went like wildfire through to the point that uh, um, uh, almost all Republicans in the U.S. believe, or believed at that point, and probably still believe, that uh, the, the law that was passed creates death panels. Fake blogs are as ephemeral as ghosts, which is why it's exciting to capture one before it vanishes. Could this one be an Israeli government astroturf campaign? Might there be a way of finding out?